Hello, this is the Radio Geek. I'd like to wish everybody a happy National Yellow Radio Day. June 1st is Nat National Yellow Radio Day. And this is my yellow radio for National Yellow Radio Day. This is a uh, Sony uh, Sports FM AM Walkman. I got this on eBay. I think I paid a little over $6 for it. It has, uh, it's pretty basic. It has the uh, band selector switch here. Um, power on and off up here. And then when you turn it on, it has two LEDs that tell you e either you're in FM mode or AM mode. Um, on the back of the radio, it has kind of a unique uh, belt clip here. And it has like a little thumb screw here in the middle. And you just loosen that. And it allows you to swivel the belt clip out of the way and there's a little locking tab there and then you can pop in your two AAA batteries to power the radio so it's kind of a unique design in that regard there's a hole here in the back of the case and in the belt clip it's got a little peg that fits right in there and then you just tighten it down with a thumb screw and you're ready to go jogging. It's interesting, it does have a switch on it for FM sensitivity, either local or DX, but it does not have that for the AM band, just the FM band. And uh, I have a feeling this radio was probably designed more for FM than AM, and we'll get to that in a minute. It does have on the back here, it has um, your tuning wheel here and your volume wheel over there and up top you have your headphone jack because this radio does not have any kind of a speaker built in it's strictly a headphone radio and then the dial indicator is up here top so you can see it when it's uh, on your belt I guess but that's pretty small so <laughs> I don't know you have to have really good eyesight or um, uh, I don't know uh, but that's pretty small for the distance from your belt to where your eyes are. So, I don't know, I guess you just kind of turn it until you hear what you want to hear. Um, it does, the interesting thing, the front of it, the way it's designed, it's got these like um, patterns in the plastic that make it look like th that would be a speaker, but there is no speaker. So what I've had to do is I have the headphone jack plugged into my Radio Shack little audio amplifier and we'll be listening to it through this speaker here so it does sound pretty good um, on on the FM band on the headphones for sure so I thought I'd turn it on and give it a listen I will tell you that I did play with this a little bit and FM seems to work just fine but this thing is pretty dead on the AM band now I don't know if this um, Sony SRF8 uh, was, are they all that way? Um, or is it just the one that I have just doesn't seem to be able to pick up much on the AM band? Perhaps somebody out there has one could comment on that. Uh, or perhaps maybe I just got one that's a dud on the AM band or something is wrong with it. It does pick up some stations, but but not very many and uh, nothing nothing distant that I could tell. Um, but we'll give it a try anyway and see what we come up with. Perhaps uh, it'll perform better now. I don't know, but um, it wasn't earlier, that's for sure. So the on-off power button is here, and I believe the default when you turn it on, even if you have it on AM, you turn it off and you turn it back on, it always seems to default to FM, so that must be its um, default when it powers up. We'll see what it does this time. Yeah, it's on FM. We'll just kind of tune uh, a little bit on the band here. You won't be able to see the dial, but uh, I don't think you would be able to really see it anyway. Captain 
of our own faith. No obstacle, no challenge, and no threat is a match for the sheer determination of the American people. Some Memorial Day events were also being held remotely today. In many cases, people wearing masks. Concern relates to the use of hydroxychloroquine and chlorophyll in COVID. Okay, that was the FM band. Uh, not too bad. Picked up quite a few stations, considering that I've only have maybe a um, an eight inch cord from the uh, radio to the speaker, and that's I'm sure what the antenna is. It's probably your headphone uh, headphones when you're uh, listening to it that way. That's probably the antenna as well. So that's fairly uh, fairly short. Um, we'll go try AM. Um, I'm not too hopeful but we'll we'll give it a try anyway so you just hit your band button and the LED comes on for the AM band and we'll see what this is we're starting from the bottom of the band um, about 530 or so and heading up to the top I didn't have too much luck at the bottom of the band I did pick up some local stuff near the top though Something faint there. Faint something there. Now we're up above a thousand already, and that's all we got. So, show will buckle your seatbelts, folks, and get ready for something so unexpected that if you are actually to expect it, you'd go back in time and bump into your past self so hard that you'd both be rude to the point of never being able to recognize yourself again or even be able to make any sense of this sentence or this one or this one that was so confusing and terrible let's talk hey terrible
So that was pretty much it. Very poor performance on the AM band, which is really surprising considering this is a Sony um, radio. But like I say, maybe I've got a, a dud here, or maybe they're all like that. Um, I, I really don't know. Um, so, like I say, if any of you, anybody else has one and can comment on that, that, that would be a, a hint here for me. So, anyway, it is a yellow radio, and it is National Yellow Radio Day, so I thought I'd do a review on a yellow radio. Now, June 1st is also the first day of hurricane season, so I realize this isn't a, a NOAA weather radio receiver, but if you don't have one and you live in those areas that are prone to hurricanes or even thunderstorms or tornadoes or any other natural disaster, fires, all kinds of things, it's a good idea to have one. So if you don't have one, you might want to consider getting one. Although this is not a weather radio, it is a yellow radio. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the uh, little mini uh, demo of the SRF-8, the AM, FM, Sony, Sports, Walkman Radio. Until next time, this is the Radio Geek. Alright, so I decided to take this uh, Sony SRF-8 apart and uh, see what was inside. It's, uh, it's fairly elaborate. Um, I'm guessing this built probably in the early 90s based upon some of these... Um, date codes um, this chip here is the sony cx20111 which is a radio ic and this chip here i can only make out a couple of the numbers it looks as if this thing was really heated up and uh, the top of the package is is kind of distorted so maybe somebody tried to repair it one time or something stressed it and caused it to overheat, um, but it's it's rather distorted. It, it looks like a a, a nine nine four zero and a partial four zero H zero seven is all I could make out. And I kind of searched for those numbers and didn't find out anything really about it. Um, so not sure what that I see is, but it does look like it got stressed by some heat for sure. Um, the construction is really nice. Um, it looks as if all the surface mount parts, like the resistors and the capacitors, have a, a dab of glue in between the um, electrical connections to hold them in place before their soldering process. Um, it's got real tactile um, push buttons. Um, the dial string is uh, strung all the way around the whole circuit board. And uh, on the other side of the circuit board, is um well it's where the batteries go right where this white part is is where the batteries go and uh, excuse me here is the ferrite bar antenna which looks fairly substantial and uh, of course we've got the tuning capacitor and a couple of if cans in here and some coils for the fm and um, we have the um uh, DX switch here for the FM and then here we have a Toshiba part this long SIP part which is a TA7370P which is a Toshiba part which is a PLL FM stereo multiplex IC that's what that is um, and then we have uh, the pots here for the um, for the volume and the, uh, excuse me, the uh, shaft for the, uh, uh, the the tuning passer. This is the tuning shaft here, and um, on the back side here, it winds around here, comes up and goes around this plastic piece here, which is connected to the variable capacitor. So that's the tuning cap. So. So it's, uh, it's, it's uh, an interesting design. It's uh, got its complexities to it for sure. Um, all in all though, the construction of it is really nice. I don't know what happened to that IC. That might be 
the reason that my AM reception is not good at all. Maybe somebody attempted a repair or changing the IC at one point in time or uh, something else happened to it in its life and uh, perhaps that's why it doesn't pick up decent um, AM. Oh, there was one other chip here um, that I forgot to mention. This um, little uh, IC here, which had some uh, markings on it of 4533. And that looks like that's a Sanyo part, and it's a, a, an audio power amp for 3-volt um, uh, headphone stereo radios. So that's a little audio amp there of some kind. It appears to maybe be a, a Sanyo part. But yeah, all in all, it's uh, it's uh, not bad on the um, construction end of it, um, but uh, it appears that maybe uh, something got overheated at one point in time. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you a little extra bonus uh, sneak peek on the inside and uh, and what it looked like. All right, we'll catch you guys later.